Hello, my brothers and sisters. For all you lovers of the truth out there, I bid you greetings in the name of Yahuwah, our Father, and in the name of His Son, Yahushua, our Messiah. Giving honor to our Heavenly Father, the Most High, who we love, and giving honor to our Messiah, who we love, my brothers and sisters. You know, Father, help me to not be nervous, but to allow you to express yourself in Yahushua's name. I just want to tell all of you that we as the children of the Most High, we have an obligation to our Heavenly Father and to our King to be able to love them with all our heart, with everything they understand. And we are obligated to listen to what he has to say to us. All of you are to try the spirit and see if it be of him. That is a key principle when it comes to hearing. To really test and see if it's really coming from him and his son. Because we're living in a time today, my brothers and sisters, where everyone, so many people out here who is making this claim. Do you understand? The inspiration, his inspiration that I have been moved to speak to you today is regarding the fear of the unity of Yahuwah. The fear of the unity of Yahuwah. And all of us really need to sit back and really think as we're on our journey to see where are we now with our Father and our King. Individually, we have to ponder these things. Are we really pleasing Him? Do you understand, our brothers and sisters? Because deep down in the body of the Messiah, here's a rhetorical question. Do we really want to be unified? Do we really? Please turn with me to the book of Genesis, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, my father, my king, for who you are and for what you're going to do today. That way all of us will fear and tremble. Genesis chapter 2, my brothers and sisters. And starting at verse 1. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, Alayam ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And Allah Yam blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rest from all his work which Allah Yam created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that Yahuwah Allah Yam made the earth and the heavens. That's powerful. As we, not with our own carnal minds, but as we focus and allow the mind of Yahuwah to be expressed to all of us today, when we really look at this passage of scripture, and even in the previous chapter, when you go back as Yahuwah leads, as you notice when he created all things through his son, he created things out of its 
destitution. He created things to be in unison with his desires. From the heavens and the earth, from the seas coming together, as far as the, uh, the moon and the stars, having them unified together, to the beasts of the field, to even mankind. His intention was for a unity to be established. And what we're reading here is the sum of it, as far as that now that Alayam has created all things, he has now, at this point, come to a decision as far as resting. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? So what we see here is the unity of Yahuwah being established. Do you see this? And that creation itself was to testify of that unity. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? That's powerful when you really begin to sit back and just think on that body of the Messiah. Now, when, of course you all know as far as when sin came into play and when the enemy began to sow his lies and his deception. And when our father created Adam and Hawa, he created them to be in unity. They were to reflect his unity on the earth. And so you all are familiar with Hashetan coming to disrupt that unity. Now let's look here. Go over, please, to Genesis chapter 3, my brothers and sisters. Let's really look at this here. As our Father and our King open all our eyes and our minds to listen and look. That we may grow into his perfection. Genesis chapter 3. And let's start looking at verse 8. Of course this is after. Ha'uwa was deceived by the enemy. Her and Adam did this act. Which caused our heavenly father to now come to confront them. Starting at verse 8. It says. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah. Alayamu walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah, Alayam, amongst the trees of the garden. Stop for a moment. Thank you, my father, my king. Now, the reason why this is significant, my brothers and sisters, is because well, as we look at our father and our mother, our ancient, according to the flesh, our ancient father, Adam, and our ancient mother, Hawa. And we see that now that the unity that has been corrupted by Hashitan and also by them disobeying Yahuwah, now that Yahuwah has come to confront them regarding his unity, there is now a fear that they are feeling. Do you see this? Verse 9, it says, And Yahuwah Alayam called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? What a powerful question. And that question still stands today. Because we know that our Messiah, he is the what? The fulfillment of what Adam could not do. He is the son of man. Do you see this? And if you, thank you my father, my king, if you really listen to what's being expressed today, can you hear our heavenly father through his Messiah asking the same question to his body? It's not that he doesn't know where we are. But the question is, are we walking in his unity? Do you see this? 
verse 10. And he said, speaking of Adam, our father, and he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you was naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that you should not eat? Stop. You see, the tree of knowledge by his power and understanding represented another mind. It was not it did not represent the knowledge of our heavenly father. Because Yahuwah, our father, through his son, Yahushua, intended from the beginning that his mind would be in Adam. And Ha'uwa, do you see this? And so now that they have eaten from this tree, now another mind state has come in. The knowledge of good and evil. This is what we struggle with today as a whole. My brothers and sisters, as the whole as the whole human family is concerned, this is what we struggle with. The knowledge of good and evil contending against the straight, unadulterated truth of our heavenly father, Yahuwah. And his son, Yahushua. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? So Yahuwah asked him this question. Even though he knew the answer. Verse 12, and the man or Adam said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And Yahuwah Alayam said unto the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Now that's powerful. Thank you, my father, my king. What they spoke was true. Thank you, my father, my king. What they spoke was true to a certain degree. Adam speaking, saying that his wife gave him of the fruit. Ha'uwa say, speaking, saying that the serpent beguiled her. Those statements that came out of both of their mouths were true. But yet there was still evil attached to that. Do you see, my brothers and sisters, oh, Thank you, Father Yahuwah and King Yahushua. Can you see how now that they've eaten from the tree, how they have partaken of this, now they're actually beginning to express this to our Heavenly Father. They're expressing the knowledge of good and evil to him. Yes, those things were true. But yet the fact remains they sinned against him. And this is what the human family struggles with. We blame others for our own shortcomings. Do you see this? That's powerful. Body of the Messiah. We all need to understand here that since the beginning, our Heavenly Father created things to be in unity, in His unity. There's a difference between the unity of Yahuwah and the unity of Hashitah. Do you see this? Can you see how now that the unity has been disturbed, our father is no longer at rest? Mm. That's powerful. Now, let's go to, as we're led, let's go to the Gospel of John, as the scholars call him. But we know his name is Yehuchanan. Let's please my family and Yehushua. Let's turn to Yehuchanan. Yehuchanan chapter 3. And let's start at verse 1. Of course, many of you are familiar with the account. Let's really listen. It says there, excuse me, John chapter 3, Yehuchanan chapter 3, starting at verse 1, my brother and sister. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Yehudiah. The same came to Yehushua by night and said unto him, Rabbi Yai, 
We know that you are a teacher come from Allah. For no man can do these miracles that you do, except Allah be with him. So that's powerful. Nicodemus coming to Yahushua by night. Notice he's not coming to him openly. You see, the scriptures speak about those that believed on him, even those who were in link with the Pharisees, but many were afraid that they would be put out. And so we see Nicodemus coming, inquiring. And not and listen to this. Thank you, my father, my king. He he attested that Yahushua, that the power that was in him was of the Almighty. He did not deny that. Verse 3, it says, Yahushua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Allah. That's powerful. You know, we all have heard this before when we was in those lost buildings, didn't we? But to really come to the revelation as our Father and our King teach all of us together, is that it speaks of a new birth that we all have to be born again. Going back in the Genesis account, when the heavens and the earth, when destruction came due to the sins of Hashitan and the fallen Malak Yams rejecting his truth and he destroyed the earth do you see and the heavens do you see how now Yahuwah is reestablishing things he's in a situation now where he is at work and he is re recreating things and he commanded the animals he commanded excuse me he created and commanded us all as the whole creation family to replenish itself so can you see how now things have fallen out of unison and now Yahuwah commands us to be unified once again in his will. And so now it says that a man must be born again. You see, the revelation is that I, we know that the Messiah, Yahushua, he is the revelation of the Sabbath day. Okay? But here's something interesting, what Yahuwah has been teaching me, him and his son, is that the Sabbath day Yes, it points to Yahushua. But guess what? We are the body of Yahushua, aren't we? For those of it, for those who it applies to. Do you realize, my brothers and sisters? And this is for our Father and our King to be lifted up, not me. That the Sabbath day, it points to Yahushua's rest. But guess what? It also points to us coming into his salvation. Yahuwah working in our lives, the things that are not right. Our Heavenly Father pruning, detaching things that are not right from us, that we may be preserved, that we may bear more fruit. And so the Sabbath day speaks of Yahushua being our rest, and that is true. But it also speaks of Yahushua and his father Yahuwah expressing their salvation. And bringing us all unto a Shabbat that testifies of him. This is why he commanded our ancestors to remember the Sabbath day. They were to remember their deliverance. They were to remember what Yahuwah did in the ancient of days. This is why Yahushua said, I am master of the Sabbath day. Is he not, has not, has not Yahuwah made him to be the master of our salvation? He is the salvation of our Heavenly Father. They are working even now on us. And there's going to come a day when we all will be at a perfected state. So a man has to be born again to see the kingdom. Listen, verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born? When he is old, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? <laughs> what a question. 
Can you see the carnality? Listen. Yahushua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Aliyah. Now, do you see how entering the kingdom and being born again ties to the unity of Yahuwah? We are to be in unison with what Yahuwah is trying to tell us. We are to learn of his salvation. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So Yahushua was making a differentiation between the things, the origins of things pertaining to flesh and vice versa pertaining to things of the spirit, of the mind of Yahuwah. Verse 7, he says, marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it lists, and you hear the sound thereof but cannot tell where it come and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Do you see that? That's powerful. The plan of salvation was that it was for all of us to come into the knowledge of the truth. We were to be unified in that very action. To come to the knowledge of the truth. We all are to be unified in that. Do you see this? Listen, my brothers and sisters. Verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Yahushua answered and said unto him, Are you a master of Yashrael? And know not these things? That's powerful. You see this? You know what that tells? You know what that implies? That even though he was very learned, but yet, he still, his mind, still needed to grow into perfection. Do you see this? Yahushua didn't say that to try to be nasty to him, but to let him know that he still needed to grow. There was a certain Shabbat that he needed to grow and mature in. There was a certain rest that he needed to grow in. Do you see this? And Yahushua, he's the epitome of that. My brothers and sisters, please turn with me to Matthew, the ninth chapter, my brothers and sisters. Matthew, the ninth chapter. And starting at verse 35. Listen, my brothers and sisters. It says, And Yahushua went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. In healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Let's stop. Oh, thank you, my father, my king. Do you see his ministry at work of what Yahushua was doing with his heavenly father with him? Do you see this? This is what we ought to be unified in. This is what we ought to operate in. The ministry of Yahushua. But listen. Verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. That's powerful. We all, we all need to, we as the body of the Messiah, we as the children of Yahuwah, we all need to just stop here and just really just meditate on that. Can you see 
as our Father, our King, allows us all to see. Can you see Yahushua's passion? Can you see what he was going through when he looked and he saw disunity among his people? They were scattered. Mm. Verse 37. Thank you, my father, my king. Let's look at verse 36 again. Slowly. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. They didn't have a true shepherd. They didn't have a true leader. Do you see this? Because the shepherds that were around, those scribes and Pharisees, the Sadducees, they weren't really shepherding the people in truth. They were shepherding them to a certain degree, but for their personal gain. And Yahushua saw how they were scattered. Verse 37. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore, the master of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Do you see this? Now, notice this. This is a revelation from my father I came to share with all of you today. Notice how even though the people was, the harvest was scattered. Look at the fact that he said the laborers are few. You see that, well, thank you, Father Yahuwah, King Yahushua. That was the problem. The reason why there was no harmony and no unity in the harvest was the simple fact that the laborers were not in unity. It was few in number. Do you see this? The scribes had their problems with the Sadducees. They was all speaking back and forth in foolishness. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? That was the problem. And we all know of Yahushua's passion when he wept and he cried because there was no unity. When he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed, who stoned the prophets. Thank you, my father, my king, please guide my mouth. And you, you all remember when he expressed how how he wanted to gather them as a hen gathers her chicks. But what happened? They missed their visitation. They did not want to be unified. When Yahushua came to them, when he spoke the word of his heavenly father to them, they did not want to hear. That something is. And you know what's interesting? Before our Heavenly Father sent Yahushua out, as far as when his ministry really began to push forward, notice how he was commissioned to have his disciples with him. And he was what? What did Yahushua do? He commanded them to go and gather them. This is what his ministry represented. This was his mission. Now, as we're led, let's go back into. Let's go back into the Torah. Let's look at this here. Please turn with me to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18, my brothers and sisters, please. And Deuteronomy chapter 18, 
starting at verse 15. Let's listen to our ancestor, Masha. Because we know that he represented a replica of Yahushua. It says, Yahu, verse 15, it says, Yahuwah, your Aliyam, will raise up unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brothers, like unto me. Unto him shall you hearken or listen. Do you see this? So even our ancestor Masha was prophesying of the Messiah to come. And that they were to listen to him. Hence they were to be unified under his voice. Listen now. Verse 16. According to all that you desire of Yahuwah your Aliyam in Haram. In the day of the assembly saying let me not hear again the voice of Yahuwah my Aliyam. Neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. And Yahuwah said unto me they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brothers, like unto you, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Do you see this? Listen closely now to what Masha said under inspiration of our Heavenly Father and what our Heavenly Father spoke in agreement with him. That he expected the people to listen to his son. And if they did not, he would require it of them. Masha represented Yahushua after his kind. He was a shadow. 